Hello again, this is Grant Ebert from Gabbit Media, and today I'll be talking about how you can get your models ready for printing. So here I've got a sculpt of the Rage model. This is the one that won the viewer's choice, shall we call it? So out of all the Sculpt January models, this was the one that people chose for 3D printing. And I'm going to be using 3D Compare, who kindly offered to print this out for me. So I'm going to talk about how you can prepare these models for printing. So what I've had to do with this model, because it was quite detailed, I had to decimate it. So into the modifiers, and decimate. The reason I had to do that is because my booleans weren't working. So at the moment, this is all one model with the teeth here, but these teeth are a separate model. And you can't have that with 3D printing, you can't overlap shapes. So if I zoom into this with full stop on the numpad and zoom around, or move around, you can see this is indented into the other one, and that won't work. And a boolean will get rid of that. So it should just be a simple case of going to the modifiers and adding a modifier, boolean, choosing union, and then choosing the object you want to union with. Now you can see I've got errors there. It's just made the teeth disappear. And there's things you can do to try and fix this. So I'll close that boolean. First thing to try is the other way around. So I'll grab my rage model first, then try the boolean on that. And it looks like this one might have worked. Make sure you save your work before you apply anything. So I'll apply that and see whether it has worked. You'll still have the original there and you can move it away. And it hasn't worked this time. So there's no Boolean. And this is really common. Uh, I've noticed this with Booleans a lot of the time. So let's try just grabbing it and moving it really slightly. So I'm holding down Shift. I've pressed G and then hold down Shift. Move it just a touch like that and try again. So I'll select my object, go through the Boolean process and see if it works. And no, it didn't. This time it actually just cut it up. There are other issues that you may come across. If I press N, I can get my tools up. And if you've not got uniform scale, if your location isn't set to zero, and I thought I'd already set this, so that's interesting, and your rotation isn't set to zero, then you might have problems. It's not a case of just changing them in here. You'll actually have to press Control A to apply the location, rotation, and scale. So if I apply the location, this might work now. Let's just check my other model as well. Oh, and I need to change those as well. So control A, location. Let's try again and see whether that's worked. Nope, it's just cut it out again. <laughs> there we go, I've undone a few stages. One of the problems I may have come across there is that I didn't undo the very original Boolean I applied. I actually applied it instead of undoing it. So I'm all the way back to the beginning where I decimated the model. So I made a slight mistake, but I'll leave that in so you can see what I did. And that's why it's important to save your work, especially when you're doing things destructive and you're applying modifiers. Make sure you have a save file and it's named sensibly. So now I'm back to the position where I need to decimate these teeth again to try and boolean them in. Now there are plugins like JNM's Fast Carve, which you can try as well. Now I believe they just follow the same procedure as the boolean, but they're just quicker to use. I'll try using that this time. So I'll grab the target as the face, select the teeth and press union. Let's see what's happened. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> so eventually I got it to work. It took me a little while, but finally this is all one mesh. So that is the first stage, making sure you've got a uniform mesh so there's no separate parts. And like I say, there's JNM's fast carve to help you. There's the Boolean operation within Blender itself. And I had to take this to 2.79 in the end and use ball tools. It's very strange. It's a glitchy thing, Booleans, especially if you've got quite complex meshes like this. So if you know you're going across the 3D print, you have to be a bit careful sculpting your objects, trying to leave out any separate objects as much as you can. So just be aware that you will have to Boolean your objects together if you do your modeling or sculpting as separate objects. The next thing I'll need to do to this Rage Sculpt is make sure that it can stand up. So I will need to adapt the shape slightly. I've saved this till after the Boolean because I knew I was going to have to decimate the mesh slightly. It's not massive, but you can see there's some inaccuracies in the mesh just there. And there's a few areas that need a bit of tidying up around here. I'm assuming minor details like this around the eye won't be too bad and we won't need to add too much topology. But now because it's all one shape, it doesn't matter too much how much detail I add to it. But before I do that and before I start smartening the object up, I do need to make sure that it can stand flat. So I need to pull this area down and cut another Boolean shape in here. Hopefully it will work this time. And then I'll be able to make sure it stands upright. I'll add my shape first 
So just a basic cube that's scaled to fit. That way I can see where I need to drag this down to so it fits over my object. And also I want to see how close I want the chin, for example, to the floor and so forth. So here's a quick time lapse of me just pulling the shape down so it covers the lower cube. Nothing too complex here, fairly straightforward, but that's why I put the cube in first so I could see what I was doing and how far I needed to go down. So now I need to boolean the cube to create a flat base. I'll use the fast carve from JNM. Same as the boolean operation, but just slightly quicker because I can select my main object as the target, select my cube and press difference. Now I should be able to delete the cube, which I can, and the booleans worked. Now if you want to bring the cost of your printing down, you don't want it to be a solid mesh like this because it's actually paid for in terms of mass rather than size. So if I cut the middle out, I know it would cost less. What I've done is shown one way of doing this. It won't work in this case and I'll explain why. So what I've done is just delete that bottom face. The Boolean operation creates a big massive flat end gone which you can easily delete. Once you've deleted it, then you can apply a solidify modifier. So under the modifiers, solidify and you can change the thickness to a minimum of two millimeters. But I know in my case this won't work because my teeth are quite thin and the solidify will mean that they're overlapping each other. So I will have to do another method. And now I'm back to my original Boolean object and I haven't cut out the base. What I'm going to do is sculpt an object out of this cube that will cover the inside of my rage mesh. So I'm going to sculpt on this box so I'm into sculpt mode, into wireframe mode as well so I can see the mesh and occasionally jumping from isolation mode with forward slash on the numpad so I can see that my sculpt isn't overlapping my object and slowly building up just using the draw brush. Then finally when I've done that I can then boolean them in the same way and there you can see the results. So you can see the model I cut out with and there's the new sculpt as it were. I may have made a few glitches around the bottom part, so I'll just do another quick boolean to make sure it's completely flat at the bottom. So there's another couple of things we need to do. We've made sure it's manifold, so it's all one object. We've tried to cut out a bit so we can save costs. I've tidied up the mesh a little as well, so I've just smoothed some areas out. I'd be interested to know how detailed we need to go. At the moment, this is one and well over one and a half million faces I think that's a bit high and I think it would be a good idea to decimate it as well and bring it down to about 500,000 faces I don't think it's necessary but when you're dealing with big files and you've got to send them backwards and forwards on the internet it makes sense just to keep things small when you don't need to have them high and of course we've made sure it can stand up the last thing to do is just set our size so if you press N on your keyboard you get this toolbar up and with your object selected you can see one, it's scale, which needs to be set to 111, and also the dimensions. Now, at the moment, this is a meter 80 centimeters tall, so that's way too big for printing. So let's scale it right down so that that figure in the Z axis in dimensions is about 15, I think, would be a good size. So somewhere around there, zoom in on our object. That's still 25 centimeters wide, which seems quite big, really. So I'm going to bring it down even further. So it's about 18 centimeters wide and 10 centimeters tall. That looks about right. I do need to set my scale now though, so control A and scale. So it's in the center, no rotation, and it's got a scale all of one. And I know that it's going to be about 11 centimeters tall and 18 wide. Last thing to do then is do file, export, SDL. SDL files are what printers use. Selection only, so in case you've got other things in your scene, and press export. I'll quickly see how big that file is and you can see it's 85 megabytes which is just too big really and there's no need for it so let's see what it looks like if we decimate it it'll be much quicker to send across the internet and things and much less likely to have any errors make sure you save your work before you do anything destructive and remember with the decimate modifier it gives you the face count there and I'm going to bring it down to about 500,000 that's great so I typed in 0.3 and got close to 500,000 and you can see my model hasn't changed in its complexity really. So we should be fine with this. If when you zoom into your model like this, it disappears, that's your clipping in your view. You can pull that right down to 0.001 and then you can look a bit closer. There is a bit of detail loss in the eyes, but I'm hoping that's okay. I think this will be really interesting to see how well this comes out. So I'll apply that decimation 
and now I'll export it once again and this time we've got a file size of 25 megabytes so that should be a bit better so there we have it that's how you can export your models for print I'm sure your models won't be as long-winded as this I just wanted to go through every sort of possibility and problems you might come up against so I'm going to go through the process of 3d compare and see how I get on see you next time